The Giro d'Italia may not be happening this year, but don't worry, we've got loads of brilliant content in its stead. And today, a retro versus modern of two of my favorite bikes, the Cannondale CAD 3 of Mario Cipollini versus the modern Super 6 Evo Cannondale of Rigoberto Uran. Both have been big protagonists of the Giro d'Italia in the last 25 years. Let's take a look. These two riders are very different. On the one hand, we've got a rider who is a boisterous, flamboyant and incredibly strong sprinter. A rider who is without doubt a contender for the most Italian man in the world competition. A rider who's taste in skin suits and love of women drew almost as much attention as his race results on the bike, Mario Cipollini. On the other hand, we have another rider who's known for his sense of fashion and style. He even has his own clothing brand back in Colombia, which is rather successful. And he's worshipped by the fans in his home nation. And for good reason, he's a cracking all-rounder who's twice finished second at the, uh, at the Giro d'Italia and won two individual stages. Rigoberto Aran, it's quite different from, uh, from Mario Cipollini, but what connects these two riders is their bike sponsor. First, let's take a look at Chippo's bike. Now, it's a Cannondale CAD 3. This is the kind of bike that he rode in 1997. And at that time, he was the dominant sprinter in the world. For much of his career, he actually rode Cannondales and he was very prolific. He had, I think, 198 pro victories. And when I look at his bike, I mean, several things instantly set off bike nerd alarms in my brain. Firstly, those wheels. They are Spinergy Rev X wheels. Like, stand out immediately with their eight carbon bladed spokes. And if you were, were rocking these in the 90s, I mean, you were the cat that got the cream or you were Mario Cipollini. And I mean, what made them even cooler than the sort of whooshing sound they made was the fact that the UCI banned them. Although despite being pretty aerodynamic, and looking absolutely amazing. Apparently they weren't, that, they weren't that great. I mean, they were weighty by modern standards and also quite flexy. And uh, there, were, there were safety concerns. Apparently the uh, carbon on them could, could crack and those spinning bladed spokes were, were kind of a, a recipe for, for disaster. Apparently a rumor has it that a, a rabbit got killed in a cyclocross race when it got in the way of a pair of spinnages. Oh, and Paolo Bettini apparently cut his hand on a pair of spinaches as well. And if you ever wondered what uh, Connor Dunn has in common with Mario Cipollini, well, they both own spinnage wheels. I mean, what else was it going to be, honestly? Anyway, <laughs> these are quite different from the wheels that Aran is using. So Aran's wheels are representative of what most of the pro peloton use these days. They're carbon fiber, deep section, aerodynamically optimized with kind of a toroidal wide U-shaped profile and they're tubular as they were in Chippo's day. Tubular wheels still reign supreme amongst the pros, but they're typically around sort of 40 to 50 millimeters deep and the pros will change these, you know, depending on the parkours of the stage and being sponsored by Vision, Iran has a choice usually between the Vision 40 Metrons and the 55s like the ones behind me here. The next thing that really stands out to me on Chippo's bike is that Cinelli Alter stem. That is so cool and such a unique design. You don't really see stems like that. So it's like two plates of aluminium with sort of bridging and well bracing like in between the plates of aluminium. Cannondale was at the forefront of aluminium frame uh, building as far back as the 1980s. And it's 2.8 uh, frame with its oversized down tube was actually its first foray into computer aided design or CAD. And then it took the name CAD and put that into the, the CAD 3 because that was designed via computers, which at the time was kind of pretty high tech. So you've got the CAD 3 we've got here, but it changed it from CAD to CAAD, which stands for Cannondale Advanced Aluminium Design. Cipollini and his Seiko teammates went on to use Cannondale CAD frames throughout various 
iterations over the following years. And the CAD is still available now in its latest version, the CAD 13 and CAD Optimo, but it's not what is used by Rigoberto Aran and EF Pro Cycling. They use the carbon fiber Super 6 Evo. Cipollini's bike has that classic silhouette of, of the steel bikes, which came before it. And it's, you know, the, the standard sort of flat top tube, the classic proportions of a road bike. And right up until a couple of years ago, the Cannondale Super 6 had those same proportions as well. But now we see on Aran's latest Super 6, it's got all the hallmarks of modern lightweight bike design. You've got the dropped seat stays, you've got aerodynamic tube shapes, more sort of sloping top tube, more compact design. And, you know, it is really a game of spot the cable. Whereas you look on Cipollini's bike, there's cables everywhere. The new Super 6 also features hydraulic disc brakes, which we understand Duran is using in 2020, but in 2019, he was specifically asking for rim brakes, because that's what he's favored. And he's been one of the riders that's been a bit late to adopt hydraulic disc brakes. Before we move on though, and have a look at some of the components, if you could only have one of these two bikes, which would you pick? I think it's a good question. You know, the classic Seiko livery, the yellow and the red, or the sort of more modern, sort of purple, pinky livery of EF Pro Cycling and a more modern bike. We'll have a poll in the GCN app, so click on that and you can, uh, you can vote and have your say. But anyway, let's, uh, let's have a look at the group sets because as well, these are, you know, poles apart. So in 1997, Cipollini would have been using Shimano Jura Ace 7 700 and at the time this was a totally cutting edge group set um, it had a number of novel features on it and some of the latest tech which are, are things that yeah you know were cutting edge at the time but we now take for granted also interesting fact at this point in history shimano hadn't won a tour de france which is unthinkable now when you know when you think about it but it wasn't until 99 when Lance Armstrong won the tour using Jura Ace although I'm not sure that in entirely counts. They did also win a Giro d'Italia prior to this in the 80s. If you know who that was answer down below in the comments. It's a good quiz question that. Um, but yeah 7700 featured sealed bearings in the in the 13 tooth jockey wheels, um, hollow tech cranks, it was nine speed, and the biggest feature of it of, of all was it had STI shifters. You could change gear on the brake hoods. You didn't have to reach down to the down tube, you know, something we really do take for granted now. And if you compare this to the Jura Ace 9100 DI2 that Aran is using, well, pulls apart. It's 11 speed, you know, it's uh, electronic shifting, it's got hydraulic disc brakes, and it's lighter although I'm not sure that matters to Mario Cipollini. I mean, the weight of your, your bike doesn't matter when you, you uh, climb off before the mountains. Um, I mean, to be fair, he, he probably won all of the sprints prior to that moment, so fair play, yeah. One detail though, is that in some of the pictures you'll see on screen, that's not a Jura Ace 7700 crank. That is a Coda Magic crank. Now, interesting nerdy tech fact about that. It had outboard bearings on it way before sort of hollow tech uh, bottom brackets did. But I'm not entirely sure what the team used. They may have used both because I've seen pictures with both. I believe that's the crank that the bikes came with, but the team was sponsored by Shimano. If you have more information on this, again, like, let us know, get in contact, because um, it's something that is a slight discrepancy that I'm not entirely sure about. However, the gear ratios that both riders have on their chain sets is 53, 39. Although a big difference is that Aran has a power meter as do pretty much you know every single pro is running a power meter these days. Cipollini, they didn't have power meters in his day. I mean, he didn't even have a head unit. Um, but I mean, I guess you don't need a power meter when the answer to how much power are you producing is just simply more than everyone else, which it was. 
Moving on to the saddles, Rigoberto Uran has a pro logo knack with carbon rails. Very modern, very light, very cool. And it's got these sort of nice little rubbery textured bits on, on the top of the saddle to help keep him in the same position. It's nice detail that. Now, Cipollini's saddle, bright yellow, totally custom. It's got custom stitching on it. It's bonkers, but it's really cool. So throughout most of his career, he favored the Cellar Italia Century. Um, and that's, you know, what he's got here. And it's custom stitched with this kind of like lion. Well, the King Lion is what's written on it. The name Lion King was already taken. So he had to like go with King Lion. It's kind of like when you're picking an email address, I think. To be fair, King Lion is better than, than Lion King 1 or Lion King 69, which were probably the other things he was considering. The cockpits are really different on these two bikes as well. Aran has got the all-in-one-piece Vision Metron Aero bar and stem for 2020. In 2019, again, he's, a, he's kind of a bit of a late adopter to sort of modern tech. So, you know, last year he was still running standard round bar and stem, but he, uh, both from FSA as well, but he was running 40 centimeter bars, which is the kind of modern trend, slightly narrower. You know, you go back just say eight years and riders of around size were probably riding 42s or 42 centimeter bars. But as riders have started to learn that it's, you know, more about aerodynamics and there isn't really a big advantage to be gained from those wider bars on the road, they're getting narrower. Chippo's bars are, as you'd expect, considerably wider. Also, on Aran's bike in 2020, it really is a, a game of spot the cable. The, the cables are beautifully integrated throughout the cockpit and he's got his really neat out front mount for his Garmin head unit. Whereas, you know, as I've said, Chippo doesn't have a head unit and there's just cables absolutely air everywhere. I mean, this really was a case of, you know, aerodynamics just, just hadn't caught on in, in cycling in the way that it has now. Also, another cool detail is you can note the little um, bosses on the down tube that act as sort of cable guides. Now, they're actually for uh, down tube shifters so that the bike is compatible with down tube shifters if, if they were to be retrofitted or on a sort of lower spec model of the bike. I hope you found this look at the two bikes really interesting. I, I love that they both have really striking paint jobs in their kind of respective eras. And uh, interestingly, Aran typically rides a 54 centimeter frame and we've weighed his bikes and, and they're coming in at 6.8 kilos, the UCI limit. Cipollini for much of his career rode a 58 centimeter frame or 57 or 59, slight variations. But I've, I've done some research and it's said that that frame of that complete build is likely to weigh well over nine kilos. So a massive difference there, but it's not all about weight. It's also about style points and cool points. And the Seiko team bike is really cool, especially with the spinaches. I love those, and that's them. And it's all, it's all awesome. But uh, let us know which one you'd pick, which one you'd rather have. Vote in the app. I think I'd go for the modern one, but that's because I've already owned a, a Seiko Cannondale in the past. I've kind of got it out of my system. <laughs> And if you'd like to get the Italy fix, well, we've got some rather nice Italy themed t-shirts in the GCN shop.